Los Angeles is the second most populous urban area in the United States, with over 12 million inhabitants. Unless you were a local, you would never expect that some of the world's most beautiful mountains, and one of Laura's favourite bikepacking routes yet, exists just a stone's throw from the concrete jungle below. In this film, we will be riding a gorgeous but challenging off-road route from the wacky Joshua Tree National Park all the way into the urban sprawl of Los Angeles. For the most part, this route keeps to extremely quiet roads, frequented only by hikers and the hardiest of 4x4s. We entered Joshua Tree on a barely used canyon road. The climb was long, slow and very hot. There was little visible life along the way. It was lizards who seemed to run the show here. At the top of the climb, we got our first glimpse of an expansive valley packed with Joshua trees and small flowering cacti. The late afternoon light took things to the next level, and it really did feel as if we were part of something special. The Joshua trees thrive in the open grasslands here. Interestingly, their flowers have no nectar to attract pollinators like honeybees. Instead, Joshua trees have co-evolved with a species of moth that is the only animal capable of transferring pollen between the flowers. The moth benefits from this relationship too, as they lay their eggs exclusively in these flowers, and once the caterpillars hatch, they depend on the seeds of the Joshua tree for sustenance. Neither the trees or the moth could survive without the other. Joshua Tree National Park is also famous for its geology, studding the park as tan or grey monoliths and ranging in size from a basketball to a skyscraper, the large areas of rock formations offered a dramatic backdrop for us to daydream.
have you taken me? We're at a Wild West town and I'm so excited yes. for it. There's Joshua trees and all these little things. Wood. I'm so excited. Very wooden thing. Terry T. Cactus, the mayor. He was elected in 2020. I'm meeting the mayor. Mr. Harry. Looks like you've set up the bike a little bit differently from Baja. Yeah, I changed some things. Handlebars, I have the Koga Denim Signature handlebars now. Couple How are more. they? It's great. More hand positions are really, really nice. And you were looking for a more aero hand position too, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So it really helps a lot. Go down a little bit. Even can do this easier now, so. Wowza. Yeah. Talk to me about the front bag. So I had the Apidura bag before this. It's a great bag. However, after a couple, few thousand kilometers, it, the squeaking just got to me. So the, the handlebar bag was rubbing on the head tube, which was causing a squeak. Yes. Okay. This handlebar bag is stabilized. It's yes. got a small little rack and a cradle. Yes. And the thing that I like best about this one is the Salsa Anything Cradle. It has a top open dry bag. So I can open from the top and see everything that's in there instead of the typical one, which only opens at the side. So you're kind of shoving. You have to pull everything out in order to get something in the middle. Yep. So that's the biggest change that I really like. Cool. And something that was really important to me was having a front pouch here. So. Wallet. Wallet. Essentials. Mask, sunscreen, headphones, all of it. Nice. And there's a Bluetooth speaker. Speaker, yes. Bit of entertainment on the bike. Bit of an upgrade. It's been really nice. Very cool. Yeah. And water capacity. Four liters on my frame. I'm so excited. All in Nalgene bottles. All in Nalgene bottles. Cool. I have a nicer bottom cage, which was the one I was really struggling with. So yeah, it's been great. I'm really excited to have that much capacity on my bike. Our journey to Big Bear began with a long, sandy climb with numerous steep ramps that tested our legs. To our surprise, Joshua trees absolutely thrived in this environment, and they were even more impressive than inside the national park. Not only were these trees taller, bushier, and with more rotund trunks, but they were home to a flourishing microcosm of life.
These yuccas. They keep getting better. We keep thinking that they're gonna be gone soon, but here we are at 2,000 meters and they're looking better than they have looked this entire time. Kind of slides do you think they've got here? I'm really hoping they're a loop to loop slide, maybe a water slide, maybe a hot hot tub water slide. Well, that's Too up. much to ask? Potentially. The region surrounding Big Bear is all over 2,000 metres in elevation. Pine trees are widespread, providing a wonderful freshness to the air and a tranquility to the forest that made us want to stay. It was quite late in the spring season, but we could still see snow cover on all of the surrounding peaks. Not your typical road. No, and we saw some motorcycles come down here before, so this must be a favorite off-road route. It's very cold. What's going on? I'm going
On the weekend days, 4x4 trails in the San Bernardino Mountains are stacked with lifted vehicles using very impressive suspension. Holcomb Creek is one of the most challenging rock-crawling routes on the mountain range, and we were endlessly entertained by people trying to flip their vehicles onto their roofs. What have you got there? Giant pine cones! Wow! I'm so excited about them. It's our first one. First one. I've been talking about these for a while and we didn't find them. It's kind of like a pineapple. It is. Pine cone, it's pineapple. Nice. It's very heavy. It's like really woody. Looks like somebody's hand carved it. You yeah. wanna carry this for the rest of the ride? Definitely not. Going for an afternoon walk, are you? I am. I really like riding, walking my bike downhill. Um, yep. It's a really nice thing. Right. It just seems excessive, this being a route. It's just, it's ridiculous. Lake Arrowhead is a mountain retreat full of rustic cabin lodges, but also conference centres, resorts and bed and breakfasts. We felt a little out of place as the dirtbags we are, but can see the appeal of escaping the metropolis and being bougie by the lake. The climb out of Silverwood Lake felt much tougher than it looks on the elevation profile. It wavered between very manageable grade and fearsome grade, right up into the double digits. As the vegetation was low, we did have incredible views to spur us on, and we even had some very close encounters with the local mule deer.
We felt the proximity of a megacity for the first time when we got a glimpse of Interstate 15. It's incredible how quickly you can go from feeling alone in nature to witnessing the extent of human dominance over our natural environment. It was at the interstate that we also found dozens of Pacific Crest Trail hikers. These folks are all on a five to six month journey from the Mexican border right up to Canada. And to our amazement, half of them were doing it drunk. The way we made emotion overcame chasing the cold away fall away fall away where do we go at the close of a day hiding the hollows of your face fall away fall away keep it close always would we know of love and pain going on here? I'm eating melted chocolate chip cookies, but it's very convenient because you can just spray it, squirt it in your mouth. I don't think there's any cookies. Maybe just the chocolate chip. Oh no, chips. it's just chocolate chip. <laughs> Loving your teeth. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Real home is never far Beyond the interstate, we climbed into a new mountain range called the San Gabriel Mountains. Ahead, we had a long 25 km climb to Mount Baldy Notch. This forest road winds its way into ever-narrowing valleys, crossing a handful of dry riverbeds that are awaiting next year's snowmelt.
believe I made it that far. <laughs> That's really impressive. I love that I could help you here, but instead I'm just filming <laughs> just, it. Just filming. This makes it all the more impressive you rode up this. You can tell how hard it is by how wide my eyes get. Alpine views consisted of snow-capped mountains, jagged rocks, long scree slopes, and various species of pine tree. The highest peak, Mount Baldy, is over 3,000 metres high, and incredibly is just 16 kilometres as the crow flies from the suburbs of Los Angeles. This has been such an incredible climb. Definitely the best on the route so far. Glendora Ridge Road must be one of the best paved roads in California. This quiet ridgeline boasts views both deep into the canyon below and across to the spectacular ripples of the mountain wilderness areas above. The only way to better experience these landscapes would be from the front seat of a helicopter. How are you doing here? 
good. It was a little bit of a brutal climb to get up to, brutal push to get up to our campsite, but the view's incredible. And I'm it. sitting in the chair, so I'm feeling real bougie. Let's have a look at this view. Oof. What a delight. Right next to LA. What are you doing there? I'm just having an impromptu rest day. I think we've been riding for five days in the mountains and our bodies are feeling it. We've got time, so it's time for a day off. What are you up to today? Loving this rest day. I mean, look at the view. It's incredible. And no one's around. It's a beautiful scenic road, Ron, and there's just no one around. You gonna do some watercolors? Yes, watercolors, some journaling, some reading. I have lots of rest day activities. There are not thousands of people up on this gorgeous road. This is crazy. We've seen five cyclists today, and it's a weekday, but this road's incredible. It's so much fun to ride. I suspect just because LA has so many amazing roads, that's the only explanation. That has to be the explanation because this road is incredible. It's so nice, and the like the views just keep going. cannot believe how clear this water is and how close we are to LA. It's, it's so bizarre. It's absolutely beautiful. You can tell a lot of people come here on the weekends, but it's great to have a place for ourselves. We experienced an explosion of wildflowers on the climb up to Monrovia Peak. Entire mountainsides were coloured in purple, yellow and orange. In September of 2020, one of the biggest fires in LA County history wiped out almost all habitat on the mountain. And while tragic, life always finds a way back. On our long but gentle ride up the hill, we witnessed a staggering amount of insect and bird life, attracted by the endless sea of wildflowers that simply would not have grown in these numbers with a thick tree canopy above. It was a sight to behold. Growing in the yard There is a star Falling in the dark Isn't that 
So this is fun. I'm currently climbing down a ravine because my drone just fell out of the sky. So should be around here somewhere. Okay, so I can hear the fan around here somewhere. The drone's fan that is. And I'm hoping it's not dead. Come here little drone. Oof. Hmm, gimbal still works a little bit. We might be all good. Drone's okay. I found it. It works. But we have destroyed a GoPro on this trip and I break thousands of dollars of camera equipment each year trying to get amazing shots. So if you want to support these videos, all you have to do is go on Patreon or find the donation link and I'll make more. With just 15 kilometers left until we were in the hustle and bustle of LA, we were expecting a paved road descent. 
But to our surprise, Mount Low Road allows you to drop into one of the largest cities in the US on dirt. This steep, twisty descent follows a former scenic railway line built in 1898. Unfortunately, this will be my last descent in the Americas for a little while, as I'm off to Australia to be closer to my mother who is dealing with ovarian cancer. But I'll definitely be back, perhaps next year, to continue the journey north. Go downhill a lot faster. 